I'm constantly setting myself new goals. It does get kind of lonely sometimes. I'm not at the point where money doesn't buy happiness. I am at the point where I've kind of made it and it's just, I feel like I've passed all the levels and I'm just bored. So I'm just constantly strategically setting new challenges so I don't pretty much feel depressed. Wherever you guys are watching this show, I would truly appreciate it if you follow or subscribe. It helps a lot with the algorithm. It helps us get bigger and better guests and it helps us grow the team. Truly means a lot. Thank you guys for supporting. And here's the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, we got Forex trader Alex Gonzalez here. How's it going, brother? Good, bro. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, all the way from Miami. Yeah, long trip. Long yeah, trip. I saw you just did something with your car, right? Yeah, for Christmas, what we ended up doing is we put Christmas lights throughout the whole, whole half of the car. Yeah. And then we did a custom mount on the roof of the Lambo so the Christmas tree could be kind of standing wow. up. Wow. Yeah. Did the cops pull you over yet? No, no. Luckily, they didn't. No, <laughs> luckily, they didn't. Because I'd be looking at that if I'm on the highway. Yeah, I know. It was pretty crazy because it held up the majority of the time. But as soon as I went past like 80 miles an hour, the tree oh, just it flew like, off. Yeah. It, didn't, it actually didn't fall off. It just like stumbled down. Oh, uh, that's funny. How many cars you guys see on your Instagram? You post a ton of vehicles. Yeah, I mean, I think I have like four right now. Damn. Uh, four in my house and I have another two that I, you know, just gave to like family members and Jeez. stuff. And yeah. you're only 23? 23, yeah. Bro, that's insane. And these cars are expensive ones too. Yeah, yeah. I have like top of the line cars. Oh my gosh. So how were you able to amass that amount of wealth at 23? I mean, it, everything, I, I don't want to say kind of started happening rec recently, but I'd say in the last year and a half is where everything kind of started compounding. You know, I've obviously been a successful trader for three years, but mm -hmm. I didn't really start making big profits until about two years ago. And then about a year ago is where I learned how to actually manage money and how to organize it. Yeah. And then I just kind of did that for a whole year without spending anything. And I look at the bank account, I'm like, there's, <laughs> there's so much money. I just have to spend it, you know? Damn. So, so even though we're in a recession right now, your trades are still doing well. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're better than ever. Wow. Yeah. So that means despite the market conditions, you're able to figure out methods to make money. Yeah, like day trading has nothing to do with recession because oh, really? it's fully recession proof. You're not involved in the market long term. You're mm. in and out whenever you want. I make more money when the market goes down versus up because it's more volatile. So I catch the sales down. Wow. That's so cool, man. And how did you first learn this? Was it on YouTube or did you have a mentor? Yeah, so I, everybody goes, you know, YouTube University. There's so much information yeah, out yeah. there on YouTube. But I pretty much did the YouTube trial and ever. And so I kind of figured it out, found somebody that I kind of reconnected with and I just started following the strategy tapped with my own personal stuff into it and then it turned into why I created it today. That's insane. And you're in and out same day? Usually I'm in and out for three, four days, maybe okay. max a week. But yeah, lately I've been kind of in and out same day. And is there specific currencies you're trading? So your USD, AUD, JPY, GU, AJ. I mean, these are all, you know, the Australian dollar with the Japanese yen. Yeah. It just sounds a little bit, you know, freaky because they're a bunch of letters. And, it looks, <laughs> and, you know, it looks intimidating at the beginning, but it's really simple. It's just one currency versus another currency. Yeah. And are you just looking at the charts or are you looking at the news too? No, I never look at the news. I'm mainly just a technical trader okay. because, you know, pri at the end of the day, news, you're kind of predicting of what let's say Powell is going to come out and say with interest rates, you kind of have an idea, but you never really know, mm. right? It's just up in the air. And so the guy comes out and says the news versus technical trading. You actually see the charts, real price time data, where you can actually take execution based off of what the charts show you in that very second. Yeah. A lot of people take the news super seriously mm -hmm. and then they go all out and then, you know, I mean, know. that's more of a, I'd say, I don't want to say like, bank way you get money but it's more of like an institutional way where larger money is moved right I, i'm not moving hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. within a day you get me that I'm, makes sense so it's for me it's a lot easier to get in and out with the same day yeah what's the most you made in a day i think it was a hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars in one day but it, it was a but like i wasn't even my goal wasn't even to make that much that day yeah right? my goal was just <laughs> to make like 50k that day but i was in the position at one in the morning Miami time yeah and then there's just something called London session where London session kicks in and more volume comes into the to the markets at that time and you know I'm talking to my students I'm like bro should I hold should I hold or should I close and I'm like you know what I'm gonna stick to my strategy just set and forget I'm just gonna knock out and I woke up the next day and then my 50k had turned to like about 90 and okay. I'm tripping out I'm like hold 
Wow. Right, so now we're on to something because my goal has always been to get 100K. Yeah. So then as soon as London session ends, the New York session comes in, which is now the new volume mm -hmm. of money moving around in the markets. And then the price has a retracement and back down to like 30,000. Mm. And then there I'm like, wow, you know, I'm rethinking my whole life, <laughs> everything that I did. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stick to my strategy again. New York session came in, pushed it, and we closed for like 125. Damn. Yeah. And how much did you risk to make that? I think I risked about 25,000. That's it? Yeah. Wow. So, so in Forex, you can make 5X on your money? Yeah. I mean, it just depends because obviously like I have a big account, so yeah. I risk just a certain percentage of that account. I don't risk, you know, I don't go all in on my account size. I'm risking anywhere from one to 5% of my actual account Dang. size. Yeah. But my risk to reward ratio is extremely positive. Yeah. That's actually super safe because when you think of Forex, you think of really risky trades, yeah, but yeah. one uh, to 5% is nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Because if you think about it overall, the long term period, if you, let's say you target 10%, of, my goal is 10% a month. Mm -hmm. But when you do that on a $10 million account, you're making a ton of money. A mil a month. Exactly. But people do 10% on $1,000, which they just started their account. And it's not realistic. You're not going to become extremely successful off of $1,000 on 10%. You right. get me? It's 100 bucks. It's literally nothing. So you have to take the same 10% approach to obviously a higher account. Yeah. So how much did you start with when you started? Like every, I was working at Dunkin' Donuts, so I didn't have Damn. much. Yeah, I mean, so I probably had a couple hundred bucks, maybe a couple Humble thousand. Humble beginnings. Yeah, yeah, I was wow. working at Dunkin'. And you turned that into millions? I turned it into millions at year four. So year t up to year two, I was completely negative. I had okay. lost about like twenty thousand dollars. Damn. And then on year two and a half, I got funded. There's these funding companies out there that you just showcase your skill set. If you're good, they give you money. And then once you pass the valuation process, they fund you money and you get a certain percentage of the profits. Wow. And I turned it where I made about like twenty eight thousand dollars. And at the time that was a whole year worth of my expenses, you know, left Dunkin' Donuts and then I just became profitable ever since that. Man, you really stuck through it, going down 20 Gs, yeah, working a, a nine to five at Dunkin', yeah. and you still had conviction to be able to do 100%, it. 100%, yeah, 100%. What do you think uh, had that made you have that strong mindset? Mainly seeing other people that were actually having the results. And myself, I was predicting the trades, but I just wasn't able to get into them. For some reason, I, I could tell, okay, you know, price is gonna go from point A to point B, but mm -hmm. I was kind of choking on the execution part because I didn't believe in myself or didn't believe in the strategy. Mm. And then time and time again, I stopped getting so nervous and just taking the execution and risking the trade. And, you know, over time you become so numb to it that you just take the trade and, you know, you end up having the result. It's like if you're getting into a fight, you get yeah. me? Like the UFC, you know, obviously your first couple of times you're scared of getting punched in the face, but you know, after a while, you know how to dodge, you know how to, you know, miss the punch. So you know where the opening is. So you get wow. it. That's super cool. So when, when it comes to funded accounts, how much percent gain do you need to achieve to get funding? So some funding companies like Rocket 21, they have 8%. Uh, when I started, it was 10%. A month? A month, yeah. Okay. Well, so you have to get 10% in 30 days. And then the second step is 5% in 60 days. Mm. But now Rocket is literally 8%. Unlimited time, you can take as long as you want. And then the second step is 5%, you can take as long as you want. So the, wow. the game has gotten so much easier than to when I started. Yeah. And how much money do you need to be uh, like trading with to achieve 8%, 5%? So anything really, like you can put, you know, $1,000 of your own money or, wow. or $1,000, you could or you could, you could buy a, a challenge. Let's say $1,000 with a challenge, you'll get, I think it's almost 300K mm -hmm. of money. So I bought, when I started trading, it was a 500. That's all I, all I was willing to put was 500 bucks. So for 500 bucks, you get a $100,000 account. What? And then you pass it valuation. That sounds insane. Yeah, dude. but it's but it's hard because the rules are hard. Okay. Right? So the rules are really hard. So, you know, the obviously the pass rate is about 10%. Oh, that's pretty low. So, you know, I, well, which makes sense because if someone's making money, someone has to lose. So it can't exactly, be high. Exactly. Yeah. But at the end of the day, only the successful traders are going to make money. Right. So how many forex traders actually make money, you think? I'd say realistically, because I see the numbers and I see the stats, I'd say probably four to five percent. <sighs> That's low. But, but but like if you think about it, four to five percent isn't low because it's because it's a world population. Like right now, let's say okay. how many people go into the NBA to get drafted? Let's say uh, 100,000 people, just to put a number. Yeah. How many people would get drafted? Only two rounds of 20, 30 what, each, so 60. What percentage is that? Yeah, it's like 1% under that. No, way under 1%. So yeah. the odds of you becoming a successful trader are much higher than going to any professional route. That goes for football, basketball, right. soccer. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, I never thought of it from that point of view. Yeah, so obviously, you know, it's going to be low, but it's accessible to more people around the world. Yeah. Why do you think Forks gets such a bad reputation? I say because the entry barrier is so low 
that it's so easy for any of these wannabe gurus just to come in and yeah. just kind of make a quick buck off of a course sale or make a quick buck off of a money management account. And I hate it because it's bought such a bad rep to the niche that I don't even cons like, like when people ask me, what do I do? I just say I'm a day trader. <laughs> I don't even say I'm a Forex trader yeah. because I just want to avoid that awkwardness. Yeah. yeah. It has nothing to do with me. You get me? Like, I don't. Nah, for sure. And it, it, it bothers me so much because they took advantage of the small entry barrier and they took advantage that it's such a fast way to make money that, you know, people sold it in a bunch of different ways and it just got bad reputation. Yeah. People automatically assume scam if you tell I, them I don't Forex. even know why. It doesn't make any sense. It's because of that whole uh, TD, FX winning. Yeah. I mean, I was part of that. I got, I got wrecked. Yeah. I got caught in that too. So many of my friends did. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, even before that though, people were assuming it. Yeah, because it was uh, MLM, you know, the multi-level marketing, yeah. like IML or stuff like that. They would recruit people and not even teach them how to trade. And that's what brought the big awareness to trading. And uh, obviously they put people in certain platforms that didn't have the best market conditions and you know, they got the, the scam yeah. reputation. Now, are you at the point now where you can still lose or are you just winning from here on out? No, I definitely lose. I, I'd say out of 10 trades, I'll still lose four to five. Okay. And then the ones that I win, they just weigh out the losses by three, four. Wow. Okay. So you're still losing 40, 50%. Easily. Yeah. For sure. Dang. But that doesn't matter if you're making over 50%. Not at all. I mean, if you think about it, I can literally have a, 30% win rate and I'm still profitable. I can lose really? seven trades out of 10 and I'm still profitable because let's say out of 10 trades, I'll lose seven risking 1%. Yeah. So it's just minus 7%. But then I win three with a one to five risk to reward. So if you think about it, I just made five, 10, 15%. So I just made back 7% of losses and then I made an extra 8% in, Got in, it. in revenue. You Got it. Me? So your wins are at a five X rate. Average, I say it's anywhere from 2.5 to 5, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that'll outweigh most of the yeah. losses. So I, I can literally have a 20% win rate, and I'm still profitable. That's so cool. And are you coaching people how to do this? Yeah, I started recently, about a year ago. It just kind of happened randomly because, you know, you get bored as a trader. You're just home doing nothing. Okay? <laughs> so I'm like, you know, let me just start posting this stuff. And the people just want to learn. And, you know, I kind of brought a new wave, I think. That's why I've grown so fast and I've gotten such a big community. Yeah. Because I'm just transparent. I literally say, like, right before coming into here, I'm like, all right, guys, this is the trade. This is where I want to get in. And this is where I want to get out. And that's it. You got wow. me? So I do that every single day. So your students are happy. Very, very happy. <laughs> very, very happy. That's yeah. cool. And what platform are they trading this on? It's it's all the same thing, MetaTrader. Okay. So you analyze the trades on TradingView. That's pretty much where you look at the pairs, you look at the markets where you're identifying, and then you actually take execution on MetaTrader. Yeah. But MetaTrader is, let's say, like a like an Exxon. That's where you could just get gas from. But you could go get gas from, you know, Shell or whatever right, other there's gas other stations. ones. Yeah. So I just personally use MetaTrader because it's what 90% of the market uses. Yeah. Wow, this is so fascinating, man. What are you spending all the money on? Bro, honestly, I've been spending a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, been spending, I've been spending a lot of money right now on cars. Just moved into a new house. Nice. I bought watches. I love I, watches. I travel a lot. Jets are very expensive. I've been, you you know, flying private only? Yeah. Damn, private, bro. Private, yeah. Miami to Vegas, that's like 40 Gs. Round trip will be like 45, yeah. Jeez. So you're printing money. S sometimes. <laughs> oh, my god. I've been three weeks without taking a trade. Wow. So I haven't so made, you're not even trading right now? No. I mean, there's no trade presents itself. Like, there hasn't been any trades in the Oh, market. so you were super disciplined. Oh, very, yeah. Very, very, very. that's a long-ass time. Yeah. I, I, I think on Thursday, so three days from now, it'll be one month since I haven't taken a trade. Is that the longest you've gone? It is the longest I've gone. Wow. It's just because the more I get into trading and the more experience that I get, the, the less I need to trade because I know that I'm just waiting for one good trade that can make me five, six, seven times my risk to reward. And that's mm. it. That's all I need. That I mean, cool. if, if th think about it this way. Think about trading like baseball. You're just there standing in home base waiting for the ball to come. Mm -hmm. You're not going to swing at every ball that comes. It's just pointless. You're going to out throw your arm and you might strike out. Yeah. I'm literally sitting in home base and I'm just waiting for that straight ball at 50 miles an hour just so I can send it out home run. You get me? I, yeah. I don't need to waste my energy swinging at every ball that comes my way. Are you interested in coming on the Digital Social Hour podcast as a guest? We'll click the application link below in the description of this video. We are always looking for cool stories, cool entrepreneurs to talk to about business and life. Click the application link below and here's the episode, guys. Most people don't have that discipline, dude. No. They're, they want to trade daily, like even hourly. And I understand them. You know, I was there at one point. It's because they, they need the money or they want the money right now. Yeah. 
I don't need the money right now, thankfully. You know, I've positioned myself to where I don't have to have it. And uh, I just set myself up for success with the best trades possible. Wow. So what are you doing for just the past three weeks, son, if you're not trading? I mean, I, I made it. I made it. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, I, I cannot move a finger right now for the next 10 years and I can keep the latest. Wow. So what's that like on your mental health? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm constantly setting myself new goals. So, okay. I, you know, it, it does get kind of lonely sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, that's I'm not at the point where money doesn't buy happiness. I'm not at that point right now because mm -hmm. I could still buy a Bugatti and I'll, I'm sure I'll be happy. But okay. I, I am at the point where I've kind of made it. And it's just, I feel like I've passed all the levels and I'm just bored. So I'm just constantly strategically setting new challenges so I don't pretty much feel depressed. Do you get me? That was me during the crypto bull run last year, dude. Mm -hmm. I'd wake up, make 50, 100K a day, and I'd feel like, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like a It just feel like, you know, like a loss of purpose almost. Yeah, it's it's such a People weird People watching feeling. this are probably like, we're it, crazy. Yeah, it's such a weird, it's, it's so, like... We won't be able to explain it. Somebody no. would have to be able to experience it to actually understand yeah. it. The more we try to explain it, the more we look like assholes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah, no, it's one of those things. But uh, what was it like gambling with Dana White? Dana was lit, bro. I did not expect for him to be that cool. You know, I'm hanging out around with Steve and stuff. And not going to lie, the, the guy's a beast. Yeah. I was, because he pulled up at four in the morning. And we were, I was already falling asleep at the table. He pulled up at four? Bro, he pulled up at four <laughs> in the morning. And he pulled up at four in the morning after being up two days in a row for UFC and, you know, being there for the fights. And then he had just lost half a mil the night before. Damn. So Steve was on a mission to turn 10K to half a mil to give to Dana, which he did it. Guys yeah. are savage. And then, you know, Dana pulled up at four in the morning and then they kept gambling. I'm like, dude, what the dude. is going on? Dude. I'm like, bro, what's going that on? That is insane. So Steve's still gambling hello? Bro, Steve's a beast. <laughs> Steve is a, 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 a monster. How did you meet him? Um, we have a bunch of mutual friends. Um, and, you know, out in Miami, I'm always there in Brickell and just mainly mutual friends. Nice. Yeah, he uh, he was in Miami for, for a few years, right, in that penthouse? Yeah. That's cool. And you gamble with him? Do you bet your own money? Or? Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I, consider my, I mean, I consider myself a professional gambler. Okay. You know? So I'm very strategic when it comes to gambling. Is there certain games you won't play? I'll play anything because I know at the end of the day, the casino is going to win yeah. so i come in with the mindset i'm like this is what i'm ready to lose so i'm not attached to the money at all smart some at people all. are very attached no, no. <laughs> like i can go in with 10 20k and i'm ready to lose it i'm like i'm i'm going for the experience and to have fun yeah that's just my cost to have fun i'm not there to make money off the casino that's a good mindset man because some people are spending like their last pennies yeah or whatever but i get them you know it's their only source at the end of the day and they feel like they need the money yeah and when somebody needs money and they need it now people would do really bad things to, for to sure. get it done have you ever won gambling in the casino i think i've been gambling for four years and i don't think there's been one night where i've left <laughs> <laughs> damn it's that bad yeah, yeah yeah some days you win but i guess not I've, when you're with steve i've played blackjack baccarat i've gone to poker games yacht poker games yeah you can name it I have never left with a dollar in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Poker is like, at least you can, that's more skill based. It definitely is. But I can't be the guy that I win the pot and then I leave. I yeah. feel like it's just unethical to the game. That happened to my last poker game because I have them here and mm -hmm. uh, this guy doubled up and left. That that See, that's so unethical. I'll never invite him ever again. <laughs> I kick him out of the group chat. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Everyone was pissed. Yeah, yeah. That's it, To me, that's super unethical. It's like, dude, like, obviously, you know, we're all here to make money, but it's, gonna, it's a little yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just they're, they're just like unwritten rules. That For you, sure. That you don't do. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name him because he probably watches this, but <laughs> we all know that one dude for sure. Yeah. Are you traveling a lot right now? Yeah, I've been traveling a lot. I've gone to Latin America a lot. We went to Brazil over there with Steve. Nice. Uh, you wanna... speak Spanish? Yeah, I'm Cuban. So nice, my nice. My family's Cuban. Um, went to Colombia, Europe, Ibiza, Spain, London, New York. Damn. Yeah, you know, pretty much everywhere. You've been, you've been everywhere. Killing it. I love traveling. Really? You, you learn a lot about culture, life. I agree. The only thing I don't like is the airports and the whole time shift. It kind of mm, messes jet things lag. up. Yeah, it really, yeah. really messes things Especially up. Especially as a trader, that must be tough. It's so Waking confusing. up at like 2 a.m. some places. Super confusing, super confusing. Because it's yeah. just, I'm, I'm not in sync with the market and I'm not in sync with time right there it's just super confusing yeah how's the cuban food in miami amazing bro i, I heard it's it. good i love it i love it i love it i tried it once actually it was really good where'd you try that uh i forgot the name if you said it maybe i was in brickle oh uh, like la carreta might have been Vers it was Versailles, fire dude no? i don't remember it was a few years ago nice but is that your favorite cuisine to eat yeah i anything cuban i'm ready to go yeah dude i love food <laughs> have you been to cuba never 
Really? Never. Is your family from there? Yeah. My dad actually came to Miami in a raft. No way. In 83 or 82. Yeah. Holy It was like seven days at sea. Dude, that's baller. Yeah, he's a gangster, bro. What does he I think know? of what you're doing now? He must be... Nah, he's tripping out. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, my family my family didn't really know who I am, social media-wise, obviously. Yeah. Because they just barely... They barely still don't know how to use an iPhone. Oh, So, wow. they're not in tune with where the world is right now in terms of technology. So I just don't inform them too much because they simply won't understand. Wow. And at the beginning of my journey, the lack of their understand, the lack of understanding for what I was doing affected what I had going on for myself because I was doubting myself. You get mm. me? I'm taking on this whole new journey, this whole new niche, and I'm ready to give it 100%. And my family is not supportive Yeah. because they just simply don't understand. And their lack of not understanding can't let that affect where I'm trying to go. But when you pulled up in the Lambo, that changed. Oh, yeah, they tripped out. <laughs> <laughs> they tripped out. Damn, that must have been tough, though, not having their support. It was pretty tough. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, and I feel like that's actually a common issue with people looking to go into whatever business venture, entrepreneurship, trading, their parents. I mean, don't. I get them. You know, I put myself in the shoes and I understand them because they came to this, they, you know, they flew, like, they literally immigrated to another country to just work become successful and give the, fa the family the best life possible yeah now they have this crazy son that's trying to click a couple of buttons on the computer and trying to make something out of it and i get them because what they want is the best for us yeah right and i i understand that but sometimes their vision of what's best for us is not what is the actual best situation mm. for us to succeed yeah different time period too exactly what they think is best was best for them at the time 100%. they were our age but now it's Shit evolves quick, man. Time Who knows what our kids are going to be doing? Yeah. <laughs> Were you an only child? No, I have a little sister. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was an only child. So for, for my mom, it was uh, dropping out was... You dropped out? Yeah, of college. Really? Did you drop out? I never went. Oh, you never <laughs> went? <laughs> Damn, <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I did go. I just never showed up. You get me? Yeah. Like, I, I was registered. I think I went for a week. <laughs> and then I just never went back. Wow. Yeah, you just never liked school? No, no. It was never for me. Yeah. yeah, I wish I dropped out of high school, honestly. Really? Yeah. Were college you, was a bit late. How long were you there before you dropped out? Like a year. Oh, okay. Just partied hard. So you got the party experience. Got the party experience. I don't know how people do that for four years. Because after the year, I was like... Burnt out. It's boring. I yeah. mean, I don't know. Are you a big partier? Um, not really, bro. You know, I'm, I, I've i never gone to a high school party. I've never gone to a college party. Damn, are you serious? I, yeah, I've never done that. I'm more of a private party guy, if that makes okay, sense. Okay, like, like a... Like, I bring like five, six friends to my house and like 10 girls and that's it. But like, not... Okay create a scene with 50 60 people that i don't even know right and i won't go to a club and share a table with people i don't know you know? really i just i just don't i don't know man i don't feel comfortable it's so weird dang so, so weird. you're very private yeah, despite yeah. having a following yeah, yeah that's interesting wow i'm not a club guy dude it's it, to me it's so awkward you go to the club and everybody's just there on their phone or scrolling through it and you know yeah as, you know as soon as the bottle comes out they put the flash <laughs> and they put it down the table's like 10 g's yeah for the bottle it, it's just I, I don't know to me it's all it's all fake you yeah I mean? Every, everyone's there just for the video and that's a lot of miami nightlife so you're you're kind of avoiding all that yeah i avoid as much as i can wow that's interesting like, i have so much more fun in my house like dude people get sucked up in that nightlife out there yeah, it's expensive bro. you could see it on their face yeah. they age like crazy oh yeah big time big i know time. people that live there in their 30s having gray hairs <laughs> it's bad dude yeah, i can imagine like it. you're up till 5 a.m partying oh, yeah. and drinking you could go out every day in miami and not even notice what day it is out of the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because space is open every day, right? Every day, yeah. And 11. Yeah, so Have you been to 11? I've been, yeah, I've been. Yeah, yeah I went once. My phone died. It was traumatic. <laughs> traumatic experience. Couldn't yeah. get out of there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what else do you do in your free time? So, mainly, uh, lately, I've just been, you know, team building. I have, you know, a group of, like, traders that I kind of connect with a little bit. And, honestly, just giving back to the community. I don't know if you saw, but I gave away a Lambo. I don't no, know. I didn't. What? Yeah, I gave away a Lambo. How did you pick the winner? Um, it was rock, paper, scissors. No way. Yeah, yeah. We just two, you picked two random guys to play. So we did a community event where we have a free trading competition. Yeah. And then the people that ended up in the top 10 of the leaderboard, they would come out to Miami and mm -hmm. they would do the rock, paper, scissors. Dude, that's and, sick. You know, you'll be surprised how hard it is to give away a Lambo. Yeah. I don't know how Mr. Beast does it every other month or however long yeah. he does it. It's actually very hard. I, I, we literally picked the top 10 contestants to give away the Lambo. And we had to go down the list probably for like another... 15, 20 people because people weren't replying to emails, weren't replying to their phone numbers. What? They weren't filling for out the- For a Lambo? Diamond. Yeah, bro, it made no sense. I'd be replying instantly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and then we paid for the flight, paid for the hotel, paid for our comedies, for everything. What? And then still only six people showed up. No. I am not even kidding, bro. 
I wouldn't even fly them out. I'd yeah, just be like, "You're it's, it's on you, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, if you want the Lambo. Yeah. So we did a whole event where, you know, we put the names in random, you know, cups. It's on YouTube. We have a YouTube yeah. video on it. And then they just pick the names, rock, paper, scissors, and then the guy. That's dope. Them. So you want to be like the Mr. Beast of the Forex space? Yeah, I've done a lot of things to be <laughs> like him. You probably get it from Steve, too. Yeah, He's Steve. He's giving a all the time. Steve is crazy, man. Yeah, he needs to get back on YouTube, man. Yeah, they, they're, they're trying to see what they can do to get him back on YouTube. Yeah, right? that was so messed up, dude. He was doing so much good for the world. Doesn't make sense. Right? Like, he was such a net positive, and they banned him. Yeah. And it hurt. Obviously, it hurt him, bro, like, emotionally. You, oh, for you, sure. You put so much time and effort into a platform and, you know, all these ideas and the community, and out of nowhere, just a flick of a button, they're going to remove you. I think it's... I don't think it's fair at all. Yeah, dude. He was putting in millions of his own money. <laughs> Trust, the guy goes all in. So messed up, dude. What are, what are you giving away next? So, we might do another Lambo now in February. It's a whole logistical mission you have to set up, yeah. but we might do something where it's more accessible to other people. Because the mission we give away the Lambo was that now this guy he had to, you know, get insurance. The insurance is probably like two k a month, and yeah. he couldn't pay for it, so we, we had to pay for it. So we might give something like Teslas, you know, something where people are actually accessible and they're going to use on their day to day life. Yeah, two k a month is a lot if you don't have money. Yeah, it's it's a mission. For yeah, sure. who's a dream uh, celebrity you want to meet? Dream celebrity. That's a good. Probably Dan Bazarian. Okay. Probably Dan that's pretty Bazarian. doable, yeah, dude. Probably. He's in yeah. Vegas. I think I could do it. Yeah, Steve's probably already talking about Yeah, him. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, my videographer films for him. Really? Yeah, I'll try to line it up. Oh, if you can set that up, I'll give you a Lambo, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> People used to look up to him, man. I, I mean, I still look up to him. Bro. <laughs> I mean, like, I still, I, I don't, Even he, after the fall off? I mean, the falling, I, you can't blame him, bro. You know what right. I mean? Like, you, you know how you felt with making 50 to 100K? Yeah. Imagine how that guy felt, bro. Right, he's you making. Know, you know what I mean? Imagine how that guy felt. I think what goes up, what comes down. Exactly. You yeah. know, certain points. So. And yeah. he was number one of yeah. everything. When so you're at the pinnacle, the, you can't stay there. The feelings that guy must have been going through are probably in, like there's no comparison. You get me? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I have one. I don't know. I've met a lot of people, but I don't have any like fanboy celebrities. Yeah, like I mean, that's just the first thing that came to my. <laughs> I never thought of that question. You know? Yeah. Like, as a kid, I used to think of that with like Leonardo DiCaprio, but these days like, I don't nah, even care. Like I see, there's a lot of people that come into Vegas, and mm -hmm. I don't even care anymore. How, did you end up meeting him or no? Dan, yeah, um, at his mansion before <laughs> we all got <laughs> really. Yeah, it was like before <laughs> even came out. Okay, everyone at the party got it. At the, his house, party. his old Ignite house. Yeah, nice. Yeah, like 200 people. The, the one in LA, not the one here. LA, yeah. Yeah, that's the house. Bro. Yeah, that was the house, dude. You know, what, to answer your question better, probably the celebrity that it wanted to me is. That the Dan Bazarian of that time, yeah. right? There you go. There that you go. makes there more go. sense. There you go. That that makes more sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That I can vibe with. Yeah. But I'll still line it up for you, bro. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, where can people find you and learn more about the trading stuff? Um, bro, I have a YouTube channel, FX Alex G. Teach trading there for free. Do vlogs. You know, give away stuff on that main channel. And then same thing on Instagram. It's FX Alex G. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.